what's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Legacy's Journey, where we talk about creating what outlives you. I'm your host, Cameron Williams, owner of Kinley Consulting, where we focus on strategic financial growth for marketing agencies so that they can live the dream life they deserve and not be a slave to their business. And we do that through accounting, CFO services, and tax strategy. Now, y'all know the drill. This is season two million dollar agency so you know we have switched it up this season you know the first season we kind of you know getting our getting in our bag you know what i'm saying figuring out how we really want to approach this season two though so i had to put feelers out there i had to start asking like introduce me to some great people that can come give some value share their story now this person though i found this person specifically because i don't even remember how we connected but I remember last year they were throwing an event and I wanted to go, but I couldn't because I had already committed to another event and I felt bad because it looked like the event was going to be fire, but I couldn't go. And it was too last minute for me to squeeze and make the things. So I thought about him and I was like, wait a minute, if he throwing an event, he clearly either must be really just kind of like making it up as he go, or he clearly know what he's doing. And based on the people he had, I took it as he clearly know what he's doing. So I had to bring him on the podcast so we can just chop it up. We can get into all things, events, um, things he learned from running an event, because we know that that's huge right now. So ladies and gentlemen, introducing Josh Miles. What's up, bro? What up, man? Hey, I appreciate you having me. I'm excited for us to get into it today. All right, so tell the people, name, name a company, how long you've been in the game, and yep. what do you do? How do you serve others? Cool, man. So my name is Josh Miles uh, from New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm a 504 boy <laughs> through and through. Uh, I like to say that, but I live in Houston, Texas. Uh, I own a company called One Stadium. It, it, we're a digital marketing company, um, but I know that means a lot of things to different people. And so uh, we, what we really focus on is helping entrepreneur, entrepreneurs do uh, two Two things, maximizing their impact and their income by identifying solid marketing strategies and then implementing implementing scalable marketing systems. Uh, My belief is that a business, if you really strip away all the sexy stuff, is really just a set of systems that are running. And the problem with most businesses is that the entrepreneur or the person that started it is the business. And so when they're not working, the business isn't making money. And so it's imperative that a business has solid systems and marketing systems specifically. And so I help businesses identify those marketing strategies and then implement the systems that support it so that the entrepreneur or the business owner can stay in that space of greatness. Okay. Okay. Now, how long you been doing this? Uh, so I've been in business officially five years, um, but I've been in the marketing game for well over uh, a decade. So um, spent a few years like learning marketing through and through. It's funny, when I started off, uh, I had an e-commerce company called Jaywalking where I was the middleman for uh, brands and sellers and buyers of Air Jordans. Launched it, spent about 50 grand and uh, over about 18 months, launched the company and made zero dollars and realized, dang, I had a great concept. This is like before like all the StockX and all the sneaker apps and all that good stuff. Um, I, I, my boy likes to say Josh was the one with the idea first. He just didn't have the the leverage to go and make it what it could be. But um, I launched it and made zero dollars, spent some time learning marketing and started really helping companies that were in the sneaker industry grow and scale. And then realized, dang, I think I got a knack for this uh, this marketing thing. Let me focus in on that. And so started a marketing agency and we've been rocking and rolling ever since. Okay, let's talk about that, because I think a lot of people um always skip that part and we've even noticed that with a lot of the guests we brought on there was yep. always a business before the business that's making all the money there was always yes. some type of failure or some huge learning experience or some type of transition so tell us like from running that first company what yep. are maybe two or three things that you were like man in hindsight knowing what you know now 10 years later like what could i have done different or these were the things that made me not be as successful because 18 months is enough time, like you said, to to know like, mm, yeah, we need to pull the plug because this ain't working. Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, so I tell most people all the time, every person that goes and starts a business normally has something that they're passionate about that they just try to go monetize, 
right? I'm trying to go monetize the thing that I'm good at, that I'm passionate about and make money. And a lot of times it's, I want to get out of the nine to five or get out of my bit, the, the, the job that I have and focus on doing what I'm passionate about full time. The thing that most people don't know how to do is market. So I used to, uh, when I was running jaywalking, I was traveling with a company called SneakerCon. They do sneaker conferences all across the world, actually, um, prim- primarily in the U.S., but they'll go on international sometimes. Um, I was traveling with them as a vendor. And I go to these sneaker events, um, and I'm at the BET Awards one year. They did a two-day event in L.A. At, for the BET Awards. I'm there at the event, and they got a table. I got, I got like, my little small table, and I'm doing this raffle for a pair of J's. Um, they got another dude next to me. He got multiple stacks of uh, piles of shoes. That, I mean, literally eight-foot shoe boxes stacked eight feet high, multiple, multiple rows of them the whole night. He got over 200 pairs of shoes with him, and he's selling shoes. This white kid walks up to him, literally got a backpack on his chest. They talking about this pair of sneakers, this like unique pair of Nikes that he had that was hard to find. Kid unzips the backpack, pulls out a stack of 100 bills, super thick. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, this, dude, this kid can get robbed. I didn't try to flex. But he counts out literally $600 bills and pays six grand for these shoes. The exchange happens the whole night. And I'm sitting there like, yo, what is happening right now? It was super tragic, not because he paid so much for the shoes. But because the business owner didn't get his contact info. And I'm like, he just paid six grand for a pair of shoes. This is a two-day event. We on day one. He can come back tomorrow and want more. And like, you don't even have a way to get in touch with him. And it hit me like in that moment, literally, most business owners don't know how to market. They just out here hustling. And I'm like, dang. And so I literally started implementing a new system, even at my table. And what I started doing was giving away a pair of J's for free. Um, at, 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 I, again, I'm traveling with sneaker kind. I started giving away one pair of Jordans. We give away one pair of Jordans for free every single event. We had like the shoes in a case. It lit up all this stuff. We had a, a dope setup. We sitting there and we started giving away a pair of shoes. We had at the time, um, a bunch of iPads across the table, five or six iPads. And we literally go to these events every single, um, every single time they did an event, I'd walk out of there with 1500 emails minimal a day. And it was the the crazy thing was, was I was building my list and going back to all the sneaker vendors and saying, hey, I got your whole, I got a whole list of people in my database that are your target market because they love shoes. So won't you run a giveaway with me? You supply the product. I'll do all the marketing. And then once it's over, we'll turn all the emails over to you for everybody that signed up. Um, Started doing that. And literally in about three months, 90 days, had over 12,000 emails in a database just doing it that way. It was going back to these vendors saying, we can put your brand in front of 12,000 people by pushing a button, work with us. And they paid me to run the giveaway. They supplied a product and it was a beautiful process, but it was all because most business owners don't know solid marketing strategies, right? Once, once, like most people will launch something and it's like your family, your friends, and like the hot market, that'll fizzle out super fast. And then it's like, okay, now how do I go and make money consistently? And most people have no clue which is why 50% of business owners go out of business within a year. And within five years, 90% of people don't have a company anymore, all because they don't understand marketing. So the number one thing I would tell people is you got to have a solid marketing strategy. Like people will go put a business plan together. And I'm like, unless you're looking for like funding from investors and stuff at a very high dollar amount, you don't even need a business plan. What you need is a marketing strategy and a marketing plan to go and implement to get your business making money and do it fairly quickly. And so um, marketing is the number one thing. Most people have no clue how to truly market. And when you know how to market, you always know how to make money. I say that all the time. If you're an entrepreneur or a business owner that understands the principles of solid marketing, you'll never be broke ever. And so that's the name of the game, solid marketing strategies. Mm, Okay. There was a lot right there, y'all. (laughs) <laughs> we'll go back and hit some of these points because he he said it. He got excited, you know. He's a sneaker man. All right, so let's go back to you. now. You said you got this one guy, eight yep. feet tall, stack of boxes, and then you're over here with a more customized but higher, I guess we could say, a more detailed giveaway. Like you said, your box is lighting up. It's got the clear case showing off the shoe. So even break that down for us. Your strategy with that is because, like you said, this guy got eight feet tall boxes, shoes on shoes. You're not coming out with that. 
Your strategy was completely different. What was the thought process behind that? Yeah, so when you go to your sneaker events, they sell vendor booths, you know, $85, $150, whatever it was, to be a a vendor at the booth. And they got 200 vendors there. And everybody, for the most part, is selling shoes. So I'm like, you literally in the hub with all the competitors. Why should somebody buy a pair of shoes from you versus somebody else? Now, my business wasn't to sell the shoes. I was like the middleman. I just had the platform. But I knew that let me not compete with any of these people selling shoes and let me compliment their business. And the thing that they need more than anything else is leads. So I shifted my whole business model and I said, my goal when I come to the event is to walk out of here with, with leads, 1500 leads. Like how many business owners would kill to have 1500 leads a day? You know what I mean? I'm getting, Mm -hmm. I'm going to these events every other weekend. I'm literally whatever city they're in. They go to Cleveland. I go to Cleveland. They go to Miami. I go to Miami. And I literally paid one hundred fifty dollars for the booth, some plane tickets, and a one night hotel stay. And I'm traveling with this company, just buying a vendor package, setting up, and walking out of every single event with fifteen hundred emails minimum. One time I did twenty seven hundred. That was like the max that I did in six hours. The events running from you know twelve to six, ten to six, whatever the, the time was. And so what I did was I niched down within the space and said, let me do something different than what everybody else is doing. And we literally. I bring some, bring a few homies with me. We work in a line before the event starts. We in front of the table. This is something very simple. And if you do like, if you're like a vendor or do pop up shops or anything, one very simple tweak that I found was that if you step in front of your table rather than sitting behind it, you get a lot more traffic. Because we stand in front of the table saying like, "Hey, y'all heard about y'all signed up for the, the Jordan giveaway?" And people are like, "Nah, what's that? Oh, you just got to sign up right here, and you'll be in the comp, you'll be in the mix." to win this pair of shoes right here. And then people are like, well, what size are they? I'm like, doesn't matter. It's free. You can go flip them for the size that you need with somebody else that's actually selling shoes if you win. People are like, yeah, that's true. Sign up, boom, name, email address, and phone number on the spot. And we just driving people to our table all day long, right? And so the, the key is to stand out in the marketplace, right? There's a whole bunch of competition out here. I can't just do the same thing that everybody else is doing. I have to answer the question, why should somebody work with me rather than somebody else? They got 200 vendors here. If I'm just selling shoes like everybody else, then there's really no incentive for somebody to buy from me versus somebody else. And most people start competing on price. This is a dangerous game to play because you'll end up broke that way too, right? And we just all show up and do the same thing. And you literally are just a bona fide hustler rather than a CEO. And so if you have a, if you can stand out in the marketplace with something different and unique from everybody else, you'll like win all, all day long. All right. Now, see, don't get caught up in the fact that he's talking sneakers. If, if you stuck there and you're not keeping up, it's product or the service. What can I do that? Because that's the name of the game, right? Like even in my case, there are hundreds of other accounting companies. So it's not that one just knows that much. The, the mental or knowledge gap is not that great for the most part. So to his point, what can we do to make this stand out? How can we approach things different or in a different manner than every other, in my case, accounting firm, in his case, every other agency? Not only did he niche, which we know that should that should be basic for everybody who listened to this podcast. We know about that. But it was mixing the hustle with the system, with the end goal. And I think a lot of times we get confused that. What is the end goal? We just keep it at the money aspect. No, no, no. The end goal is I need to get leads because then I can market them as many times as I want. I can sell this list. I can keep it. I can refurbish it. So there were so many good points in there um, to not get stuck in just hustle, 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 because it's not like those other vendors weren't working hard. He just told you like the one guy, he made some money there. But he there was no way for follow ups, et cetera. So he saw that opportunity and kept going. Good job there. All right, now let's transform that. So now you have your own company. So you're not the middleman anymore. You the yep. owner. You call the yep. shots. What does that transition mentally look like? From I'm used to just kind of doing my thing. I made my money, make the sale to whoever, and then I'm done. Versus being the owner, you know. Just like I know, it's it's a lot different. I got to call the shots. I got to manage the projects. I got to manage my team. I got to oversee. I got to do checks and balances, et cetera. So what was that transition like for you? 
Yeah. So as I as I work with these companies, I realized I had a knack for marketing, and I actually shifted from like the the platform I had built didn't really ever do anything. But I started realizing I'm good with marketing. I'm gonna shift more into this agency space and function as a multi marketing consultant. We started offering done for you services and the whole nine. And obviously, like you said, when you're in that space, you have a lot more responsibility from the projects to like you. It's funny when you're in the marketing space like I am, you help so many other people with their marketing strategy. And the one thing that doesn't get the attention it needs is your business. And so I went through a season where I'm literally just implementing systems. And it was cool because I'm implementing amazing systems. That's freeing people's time up. I had one client. She was a um, she was a catering company, working part time, making about thirty thousand dollars on the side in her business. She got so busy she had to quit her job, and in the first nine months after working with me, did over one hundred fifty grand. Like off, and look, here's the thing: I didn't come in and do nothing different but change the system. Never tasted her food. Didn't look at no recipes. We changed the system of how she was getting leads, turned on, turned it on, and then it became like an engine. And she was just literally pumping leads through a system, converting about 30% of them, booked and busy, had to quit her job just to maintain, and to this day still running. Right? Um, that's the good, that's the that's the piece about a system though that will that will help you in your business. And that's one of the things where that's 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 like my specialty, right? I'm, I'm my superpower, right? It's the thing that I'm good at. How do I look at what you currently have in place and then say there's ways that we can take everything that's repeatable that you're doing, all the manual emails that you're sending, all of the um, things that are consistently happening. How do we turn this into a system rather than have you working it all day long so that you can go and do what you're actually good at? And that's literally every client I've coached, every business I've ever worked with, 98 percent of them, their main problem is. My time's getting sucked up doing stuff that I can have a tool that costs thirty five dollars a month do for me, right? Like it's 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 a no brainer, and so um that's that's literally like the transition that I made into. I was taking what I learned and started implementing it for other people. Um, and when you do that, um, it's been it's been a fun ride because I get to work with so many different companies, right? Um, like the main I, I work I work in companies at different levels. A lot of, you know, 70% of the companies that I work with are looking to hit their first six figures. The other 30% trying to scale to, to that million dollar space. Um, the beautiful thing is when you understand marketing strategy, I can take anybody in any industry, no matter how big or small, look at the um, look at their business through the lens of my frameworks and say, where are the gaps? Let's close the gaps, gaps with um, new marketing strategies. Sometimes that looks like implementing new offers and making them better. Sometimes it's just a system problem where we need to change up the systems that you're using so that they run more um, fluid and more streamlined. Um, but at the end of the day, when you understand good marketing strategy and you understand the importance of systems, you can help almost anybody. So that's why I love doing what I do, because there's really not a business that I couldn't help when it comes to this uh, process. OK, now let's go. So now we got that. You know, made the transition. Now, last yep. year. You decided to throw this in event. Tell the people the name of the event. Yep. So the event was called Accelerate Live. Okay. Now tell yep. the people, going into this event, your yep. idea or thought process was what? So my goal for hosting the event was how do I take my main framework, which is my business acceleration roadmap. It's a seven-step process. My goal was how do I teach through this framework over the course of two days and give people a great view of what it takes to have marketing in place in your business that's going to actually work. Like I said at the beginning, most people come in and I'm a text call, let people know about my thing. Sometimes there's a lot of frustration when your friends and family don't buy. I tell people you should free people of the pressure of having to buy from you. Your friends and your family are normally not your main client. Um, but you got to know how to go and find the people that actually are. And so I've got a process for how that, what that looks like called my business acceleration roadmap. We talked through that over the course um, at the conference. I brought in other speakers that um, were experts in different parts of the framework. They taught their specialty. I taught what I did. And by the end of two days, somebody literally could have walked away with what they learned and said, dang, I've got a much clearer 
um, vision for what it should look like in my business to market myself and my company so that I'm in a position to grow and scale, right? Um, it's one thing to actually grow and scale. It's something totally different to say. I need to lay a solid foundation that like allows growth and scale to even thrive. Um, that's what most people are lacking, that solid foundation. When you understand what it should be and you look, get it in place, like there's not, I, I don't think there's one client that I've worked with that actually did the work that didn't look back and say, dang, this changed my business forever. Right. Um, and so that's what we did at the conference it's called Accelerate Live because we help you grow your business faster. All right. Now let's stay right here. So I'm yep. sure. Now, like I said, y'all, let's backtrack. I was this close to going, but I could not figure out how to. I think we were in Dallas and it was, yep. I couldn't figure out the logistics. But tell me this. Now, I'm sure yep. you got feedback. And of course, you were asking live questions. Yep. What are like, the two, three, four things that from the group you understood, like, dang, these are major problems that I'm seeing because I think everybody on this pod or that's listening to the podcast, right, yep. is another marketing agency or in the agency space. And so a lot of times, I think to your point, which you hinted at earlier, we're not necessarily solving the correct problem. We're just trying to give you, I got this awesome course and you need to buy it. Or, man, I'm the best SEO person or ads person on the planet. But what are some things that, like, you got from a feedback perspective that you're like, man, I didn't even know people struggle with this or that this was a hard concept to grasp? Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of things. One, most people aren't clear on who they actually serve. You, you'd be surprised how many people, when you start asking the hard questions, when you start asking the hard questions, most people don't understand the nuances of who they actually serve. So when we talk about your ideal avatar, your ideal client, most people get stuck on demographics, right? Like, so demographics are basically if somebody walked in the coffee shop and you were there, what do they look like? Well, I serve moms, you know, between the ages of 25 and 35 who work as teachers or something like that, right? Most people have that piece down, but when it comes to psychographics and like, okay, tell me what this person is thinking. What are the top five problems in life right now? Like, who do they want to become over the next 10 years? What are their goals? Like, when you start asking those questions, people normally aren't clear. They have an idea sometimes. Some Sometimes they have an idea. But when you start asking, like, when you start digging into some of this stuff, they don't really know. And so I've even got a framework for identifying who is your ideal client, right? There's really five steps. You got to have a micro niche. You got to understand your demographics, understand your psychographics. You got to understand... Um, the journey that they've been on because everybody is trying to go somewhere, but they've come from somewhere and they're somewhere currently. I got to understand the whole spectrum for my ideal client. And then I need to know well, what type of relationship we're going to have. If I'm looking to serve you with my product or my service, I'm agreeing to join you on the journey based on where you are. Like, who do you, who do you want to be? Who do I want to be for you? And who do you expect me to help you become? Right? Um, every entrepreneur... Mm -hmm. That's good. Nobody asks. Listen, every every time I say that, people have that response that you just had. Nobody thinks through who does my ideal client want me to help them become because it is. This is the one principle that's true. If I ask you, Kim, who are you today? You're going to tell me. If I say 10 years from now, who are you? You're going to give me a totally different response because everybody expects to grow, transform, evolve, right? Nobody expects to just stay the same. If that's the right. case, then I need to know who you want to become. And if you're going to hire me to serve you with a product or a service, then who do you want me to help you become in that process? I got to know like what the end goal is. And so um, those are the steps in the framework to even identify your avatar. So that's the first thing that most people that like at, from the conference, most people don't have clarity on who they actually serve. The second thing okay. most people aren't clear on is... Mm -hmm. What are the service or product offerings that I have in this in my suite of things that I offer? Like, what are they and how do they even all fit together? It's one thing that just, well, I do this and I do this and I do this, but how does it fit together, right? If I'm going to join somebody on a journey, if you say, Josh, I'm going to hire you to help me today, what are the mm -hmm. things that you're going to need as we hit goal number one? Once you hit goal number one, what do you need that I offer to help you hit goal number two? And so we call, we, you might... Some people may know that as what's called a value ladder or an, asc or an, asc an ascension path. 
where you kind of structure all your offers in a way that's clear how people buy. But right. helping entrepreneurs position, do you even have irresistible offers, first of all? Do you have an offer that's like irresistible that somebody can say, dang, I can't afford to not have that, right? How do I make my stuff so prolific where people can't afford to say no? How do I position my offers that way? How do I, how do I create the offers? But then how do I position them so that as people go through this transformation, what do they find? Dang, he helped me reach this goal, but he's got something to take me from level one to level two. When I hit when I hit the goal for level two, he's got something to help me reach level three and position your offers in a way that's very clear. The process somebody can go through as they go as they grow, and you don't have to go find another company to work with. You don't have to go hire another marketing coach when you work with me because Josh has the the things that I need to continue to grow and scale as uh, I grow my business. So those are uh, those are the main things. Um, who am I serving? What value do I, do I offer? And then I guess the third thing is fairly simple. Like people just don't have systems, right? And that's kind of what I, I, I made my niche in the in the, in the marketing space. Um, I help people build those solid systems. I tell folks all the time, influencers, your favorite Instagram influencer or whoever it is that you follow um, online to help you grow your brand presence online will tell you, you got to post more. Or this is how you use Instagram. And they got strategies for days. What they don't tell you is that if a thousand people show up tomorrow, do you have a system that can handle the volume? And most people don't. And so even in my main framework, driving traffic is the last step. You got to implement at least some basic systems in place so that if a thousand people click on a link and that one post that you did goes viral, you got somewhere for people to actually go. Right? Like, Can you handle the weight of what, what can happen when you leverage the internet the right way? Most people can't. And so the post goes viral, you got a million views and your bank account still don't change much because of the fact that you weren't even ready because you had zero systems in place and they didn't take you anywhere. All right. So you don't know your ICA like you should in the depth and detail and the complete person and the current and the future self. Your systems is not available. If you was to get blessed with a thousand possible, you're not ready. See, yep. it's a, okay. Okay. Now yep. talk to the people um, because again, this is a popular thing. Now, if you had to go back and redo this event to make it even better, what are two or three things that you would say, I should have really paid a lot more attention to pull this event off by doing what? Cause a lot of people are like, I'm yep. thinking about running my first event this year or my first conference yep. or my first, whatever. What yep. are some tips that you would give them to do it successfully? Yeah, so um, my budget, I went in with a budget. It ended up getting doubled on the expense side. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of money on the aesthetics of the event. I'd probably scale that back a little bit um, just to decrease expenses, right? Uh, I could have executed the aesthetic almost just as well with a lot less money going out. And so I spent a lot of money on video crew. That was the highest expense, like my audio video crew that, that I hired to bring in. Um, that bill just ended up being a lot more than what I expected. So I would have probably decreased that a little bit. Still worked with them because they were phenomenal at what they did. Just not going so much all in for the, from the expense side. Um, it caused a lot of stress on the front end. The second thing is I would have probably dropped the ticket price a little bit. It was my first one. And so charging the ticket price that I did, my numbers were just lower in the room. Because I believe that price was a barrier to getting people there. So as my first one, I would have dropped the price a little bit. Um, this year, when we uh, launch, we're going to do the event again at the end of September, beginning of October. I'm locking in dates right now for that. But um, when we launch, ticket prices are going to be considerably cheaper than they were the first time. And my, my goal is to get as many people in the room as possible to dive deep into the content that we're going to be covering this year. And so I do that differently. Um, my speakers were phenomenal. I would have kept that exactly the same. Um, I ended up um, not having the bandwidth to put together my pitch deck. Because if you're going to do an event, you got to sell. Because the best thing you can do for your clients is give them an opportunity to buy from you. So I sold my coaching program as well as we added in a, um, I added in a done for you piece to my coaching program. Most coaching programs are really like you jump into a mastermind or a coaching space. 
and you just yeah, the strategy, right. but you stuck having to go implement everything yourself. And again, if you're not good at all the other things, then you ask me to do something that I'm not good at. I added in the 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 tools from my agency and say when somebody joins the coaching program, you can get done for you services at a steal. And so now as a part of my coaching program, you get the coaching with me um, as well as the done for you piece where when we say, yo, you need a follow up campaign like this. Well, now you don't have to go figure out, well, how do I build this in a CRM or in what tool do I need to use? We just do it all for you and it's done. Right. You submit a ticket. My team takes care of it and we're good. Um, and so that's been really helpful. Um, so it was cool because we rolled it out at the conference. So even all my current clients who are paying me to be in the coaching program, they were even able, they were able to buy as well. And we called it, I call it the Nas Tank. Um, you ever watch a car movie and they flip the red switch or press the red button and the car takes off in these races? It's called a Nas Tank, which is the system that allows a car to do that. Um, I implemented that in my business because I said, okay, cool. We're going to be able to take you farther, faster than you could doing it on your own. So same concept. Um, but uh, those are things. Uh, I, but I was saying all that to say I ended up doing my pitch deck the night before. So the event was Friday, Saturday. I was up till 5.30 a.m. on Saturday finishing up the pitch deck. <laughs> uh, I would have just been more prepared on that side. I mean, I don't know how I could have done that differently leading up to it because I had so many different moving pieces doing my first event. I had a small team helping me and they were amazing. But that's one thing. I would have just had more rest the night before because staying up till 530 and then getting up at 730 to do a whole day of training was a beast. But listen, we almost had a, I almost had my first six figure day at the event. So I have no regrets because we had, I, I got it done. I got it done. Got it it was, done. There you go. That was the best. That was the best pitch I've ever had, actually. And so um. Like we got it done, but it was uh it was it was a stretch and I was hustling in the in the hotel lobby trying to get that done the night before. But uh it was cool, man. It was it was good. I was grateful. Um, but those are just things that if I had to go back and do it again for my first event, I'd probably change a couple of things and uh do it that way. But it was overall, man, like for a first event, like it was one of those things like if I just break even and execute on the event for the first time, it's a win just for the like the rep of doing it for the first time, getting used to how this is going to look the whole nine. Um, for us to come out like majorly profitable based on the money that we put into it to execute on it um, was a big deal. So I'm, 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 I'm proud of what we did, my, my team and I, and we got it done and we will run it back again for 2024. All right. Now let's talk about that. Cause you know, I'm finance guy, so I got to do it. All right. So yeah. you said two things, which I think a lot of people focus on. I yep. want to cut expenses, which means, A, yep. I'm getting to keep more money. But B, now this is where some people may argue with you. They may say, well, Josh, hold up. If you want to make more money, why would you lower ticket prices just to get more people in the room? Your response to that, thinking from the marketing perspective, is? I know what my conversion rate's going to be. <laughs> if I'm going to convert on 10% of the people that are in the room, let me get more people in the room on the front end. Because if I'm going to convert on, the, my conversion rate was 10%. I'm going to convert on 10% of the people in the room. Well, 10% of new new clients, it was 20% based on the people that were already in the coaching program and bought, right? So 20% of the room bought total and spent money. If I know I'm going to close on 20%, no matter what, it's just that going to take just to have 100 people in the room versus 10. Like that's just basic numbers game, right? It's very simple. Let me not let me get more people in the room because more people have the opportunity to buy the very thing that I'm looking to sell. Right? So if you know, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. So that that's, that's that's I mean it's very simple. It's just like I can I may have more output on the front end, but I'll have more input on the back when I sell, and what I'm selling was a multiple five figure offer, right? So I could have had multiple six figure day rather than almost a six figure day by just getting more people in the room. Real simple math, right? So and let's be honest. About the ticket price of VIP was seven hundred. The, the um the basic price was five hundred, right? We we scaled up to that. We had uh three different ticket prices leading up to the event, but that's where it landed the final six weeks. If I would have brought the VIP ticket to two fifty. And let's just say a regular ticket price to 150, 
and triple the number of people in the room. If I still have the same conversion rate, which I believe I could, then I would have a multiple six figure day. And now a $700 ticket price is not an obstruction to a multiple five figure sale. It's like simple. It's very simple, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so anybody that's hosting an event, especially if it's your first one and you don't have the quote unquote clout or recognition yet in the marketplace to like drive people to show up just based on the fact that you're doing something, lower the ticket prices, get your hot, warm and cold folks in the room so that when you actually launch the event and do what you do, you just get a higher uh, buyer rate on the back end. Okay. Now let's break that down. Cause it's a lot of info he just dropped right there because I think the perception, and I don't know if this is a cultural thing. So I kind of want to get into that, but kind of don't, but uh-huh. some people would argue, well, why not leave the VIP at 750 and then just drop it from 500 to 250 or make the VIP 500. You have to play your numbers. Like me and one of my coaches have been talking about this. A lot of people will overestimate their worth, so to speak. Like we we get caught up in this. Oh, I'm worth a X amount of money. We're not going to disagree with that, but the numbers don't lie. I, to your point, if we can lower that cost, well, if I had a hundred people, what if I get four hundred people in? Now, yes, yeah, some of them may not be as qualified because we do believe the more money you're going to invest in, the more serious, the more you pay attention, etc. But I think we have to always constantly explore that tension of, hey, I can get more people and make it back on the front end or on the back end when I close, or I can get less people and still not convert and still not. So I think that's super important for for everybody to take away from this. We get so caught up in all the money we put into these events, which are great, but we know that we're coming to the event not because it's at the fanciest place but because it's something I'm trying to get from this person that I believe is an authority. For sure. So that was, and, that was great. Now he talked one, about the expenses. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say one of the things that like somebody may say, well, how do I know when to make either move? Right. When do I know, when do I know whether to raise the price and get, have less people or drop the price and have more people? And my answer to that is I got to put the same amount of time in no matter what, in this case for an event, I might as well get as many people in the room as possible, right? Now, when it comes to me working with clients one-on-one or whatever it may be, well, maybe that is where I raise the price and it's just like I can make more money for doing less work, right? But when it comes to something like an event, I got to show up for the same number of hours regardless if it's one, two, or 2,000. I might as well get as many people in the room as possible. And so in that case, that's why I said, I'm a, I'll drop the price, make price as small of a barrier as possible, knowing that on the back end, there's going to be a reward. So, and some of this is just, you got to test it, right? You got a higher price for one event, you drop the price for another one. And now I may know, let me meet in the middle next on the third go around and see if I can still get the same amount of people that I had. You know, you, and you just test this stuff. But the important thing is you got to at least launch it and try. Most people will never launch. And it's just like, well, you didn't even launch anything. We don't even know what what the data says. And so um, that's another piece. You got to make data-driven decisions. I did a whole session on data-driven decisions in your business and not making decisions off of emotion. Most people have no clue what the numbers are. Well, what was the conversion rate on anything, right? From prospects to leads, leads to buyers, what percentage of buyers bought at what, what package? I mean, people just don't know their numbers. You got to make data-driven decisions in your business. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but that was a... <laughs> Let me get that out there. No, that's fine. That's fine because that's what we preach here, financial, um, just the strategy piece. And like you said, we don't want you, and that's what we tell all our clients, look, you hired us to, to show you the data so you can make the best decision, not so you can make emotional ones. And to your point, like that would be an example of, I mean, almost to the T. All right, hey, what is the goals? All right, if you're trying to, are we trying to save more money or we're just trying to get more people? Okay, let's drop it to this price. Let's test it. Because at the end of the day, you have to go to that data, right? And even from just in continuing to help the audience, like, guys, you have to remember, he still has to buy the venue. He still has to talk about food. He has to probably accommodate logistics and who's coming in from which airports and is this convenient. So there are so many different pieces to this that for him, it's all about what can we make simple 
so that we can move faster. So this was some great stuff. And especially from a tax perspective, all of it's deductible anyway. So you're still going to pay it at the same venue. All of that part's deductible. But there's other ways to make the money. And I think that's the main part I want to drill here because we have to talk about this with our clients sometimes too. Like that SEO package, I remember one client, they were like, well, I got this 5K package I can sell after this event. And I'm like, but is that your most profitable package? Like we all want to make five grand, don't get me wrong. But if that's going to take you 20 hours to fulfill, why not sell this 1500? That's only going to take you two hours, but the people still love it, get value, and you actually enjoy that. So it's so important to work through these numbers and talk through them so that you can make the best number for you. Because somebody else might be like, I don't care. It's going to be a a $2,000 ticket. And that's everybody has different strategies. So be okay with where you are, your goals, know your numbers. He talked about knowing his conversion rates. How many leads do I have? Okay, 10%, 20%. If they are a client, if they're a brand new person, are they a cult? Like these are all things you guys have to consistently be thinking about because they're going to be what helps drive those numbers. Now, one thing you said that I think was very intriguing. You said, I almost had a six-figure day. Uh, almost. Yeah. Tell the people, if you don't mind, what do you think was the one or two barriers that stopped you from getting to that six-figure day? Because you said you were close. You got to tell yep. us how close, but yep. what are those one or two barriers that you feel like, dang, if I had just changed this one thing or these two things, I would have hit it. Uh, not enough people in the room and more of the right people in the room. Those right. are like literally the, the two things. I had a ton of people who said, I wish I could do this. I'm not in a place financially to execute on it though. It is what it is, right? Um, I need the right people in the room and then I need more of the right people in the room. So it's literally, it's a numbers game, right? Um, if I can just get more people in the room, that one increases the likelihood that I have the right people in the room and getting the right people in the room is me going back, looking at some of the messaging around um, how we talked about the conference, what people are going to get when they come um, and the whole nine. And so that's something, again, you just, you take all the feedback um, after the event, a couple of days after the event, my team and I, we met again, talked through all the things that went well, had a long list of things that we do differently and we'll make sure we tweak those things for the next go around. But uh, more people in the room and more the right people in the room is the name of the game. And when we launch it, uh, when we this year, the goal is to have that multiple six figure day. Um, just because even the things that we that we sold in the package this time around, we're launching like as we speak, right? So we're delivering and fulfilling on the things that they paid for at the event. Um, and so this time around, it'll be like, hey, this is already live. I'll have the testimonials, the social proof. Um, I'll have the clients who have continued to hit goals. I got clients right now. Like literally, I have people who come into my program who normally, when normally when you're in my coaching program, people have the best revenue year they've ever had, and that's true ninety percent of the time. Then the goal is okay. How do we take what we built that first twelve months with me, run it back again, and then scale? Right. That's the name of the game, and so. Um, it's, I, I love I love doing what I do because of how I get to serve entrepreneurs. And I remember the day I realized, dang, I think I like seeing people be successful financially more than I like making money, right? When you have somebody under, have the ahas and the, dang, I'm putting the pieces together and I get the why behind the what, right? It's one thing to tell people what to do. It's something else when you help them understand why they need to do it a certain way. And then when they execute and see the success, like I have a client right now, like almost every time we get on the call, she's like, Josh, somebody else took my $4,000 package. Somebody else took my $4,000 package. Well, she had the price, package price that under three grand when we met, we changed the pricing, added a little more value in there. And now she can't stop getting sales. Right. And we're talking about an evergreen webinar that's doing the selling. She's not even talking to anybody. And she's just seeing the bank account continue to run up. And this is the best year she's ever had in business. That's the type of thing where I'm like, OK, that's the win for me. Like I'm helping you change your life, change your business um, because of the things that just work. And I, I get excited about it. So There you go. All right. Now let's flip the gears, switch gears. 
Um, yep. I got a question for you. So if we could go back. Yep. You get in the time machine. You got 30 seconds to go back to either college Josh or high school Josh. Mm-hmm. What do you tell him, encourage him to do? Woo. Uh, what do I tell my younger self to do? Um, stay focused and start the entrepreneurial journey earlier. Um, there was a lot of distractions. I spent 10 years in corporate America, which was great because I learned a lot, but I, I, I didn't, I, I was unhappy in the corporate space, built some solid relationships. It was like, um, like in the Bible, like David goes to fight Goliath and they, they try and put him in his armor to start. And he got to be like, yo, this is not me. Let me just go do what I do with, with like how God made me with a slingshot and some, and a stone and some stones. Right. That was me. Like in corporate America, like I'm doing it. And people were like, man, you're really good at this. And the whole night I was on a global project management team and was the youngest one on the team by 20 years. You know what I mean? They got people on the team that's been working for the company longer than I've been alive. Um, and I'm literally, I'm, I, I'll never forget, I was 32 years old and the lady got her 35 year award for being at the company. And I was like, she's been here since before I was born. And I'm 32 and we in the same role. You know what I mean? And so it let me know, like, I'm good at what I do. And I realized I'm the dude that I could be good at a bunch of stuff, but what do I want to do? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. you had to really, I mean, when I cut the cord, and took off the golden handcuffs. I left a, a six-figure job, you know, at the time, a wife and four kids, and walked out of that thing cold turkey off of a dream and, and some prayers. You know what I mean? And I probably wouldn't have quit my job as early as I did if I can go back and do it again. But if I can go back and talk to my younger self, I'd say find the thing that you're passionate about and go monetize it. Go serve people with what you're good at and really ride in the lane that God made for you rather than taking a job because that's what you're supposed to do. Um, so that's what I'd say. Okay. 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 I like that answer. All right. Let's do it this way. What has being a business owner taught you about like Josh, the person? Mm. I'm resilient as they come. Um, I remember those. So in between jaywalking in my agency, I dabbled in real estate and got distracted. Um, I shouldn't say distracted. It was a great season of, I was flipping houses. I had four houses, going, four flips going at once. I did about a year and a half, two years. I was super successful. Got way too aggressive. And you just start like kind of feeling yourself where it's like, y'all can't lose. Had four houses that I was flipping at once and literally everything tanked. Had a contract to steal a bunch of money. And it was like game over for me financially. And so, I, you know, I was the dude with the like 800 credit score and that mother tanked because I was financially in turmoil in the whole nine. And just, you just young and zealous don't know any better. Um, and so uh, one thing I've learned is just through the downs, I'm super resilient. There's not much at this point that shakes that shakes me. I have moments of being stressed like anybody in the whole nine. But like to stay focused every single day and say, you know something? Revenue generating activities. Focus on the things that's going to bring in the revenue that you need to continue moving forward, continue to serve your clients at a high level, seeing them get the wins and whatnot. Um, I've just learned to be super resilient. And, you know, part of that is me just feeling like God got me and all this other stuff going to take care of itself. Okay. Now you dropped, you dropped it real quick. Now you talked about the fam. Yep. How are you keeping the balance? Cause you're trying to run in this event. You're yep. trying to, of course, keep serving the clients you already have with a spirit of excellence. How are yep. we still making time for the family and bay? Like, what are we doing on a weekly or monthly basis to make sure we're keeping that balance? Yeah, so I went through a divorce in 2020. And I've been a single dad for a minute. I'm actually about to get remarried, which I'm excited about. Um, but I was a single dad for multiple years. And I had to learn to work when I when I wasn't when I wasn't with my kids, my my, uh, my ex wife and I we split the kids 50-50, so we co parenting in the whole nine. But um, like my my when I'm with my kids, I'm with my kids, and I put the work in when I'm not with them, so that it frees me up to be focused on them when I'm with them. And so um, you know, like I said, about to get married, about to get married again um, for the second time, um, and. My my fiance, she is amazing. She's amazing and like frees she frees me up 
she frees me up to one stay focused and do what I do. So I provide for the fam, but also, um, like when we together as a family, I'm able to be present. And that's just one thing I learned. I used to be the guy that was up till, you know, four or five in the morning, grinding, grinding, grinding. And one of the things I had to learn was, um, and I'm going to drop this nugget. If you're listening, write this down. Um, most people simply rest from their work. I had to learn to work from a place of rest. And so, like, learning to just, like, shut it down so I don't hit the wall and then I'm forced to, to shut it down, right? Like, let me shut it down with the to-do list as long as ever, knowing that this is going to be here tomorrow. But in order to bring my best self to the table, I need rest. And so like resting, and I don't mean necessarily always sleeping, but I do mean at a minimum stepping away from the grind, cleaning your head, doing stuff you enjoy, so that when you step back into it, you're giving your best self. Because I went through a season where I was just always tired. And you can, when you're always tired and fatigued, you can't give your best to anything. And so um, it's important to... It's important to uh, focus on the things that are uh, that are important and make time for that, and not always be in work mode. There you go. I love that right there. Um, okay, we're getting close to the end. Dang, we was getting good. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Tell the people if they want to connect with you, learn more about this system, yep. uh, figure out how to work with you. Tell the people again, name who you are. Who yep. do you help specifically? And like any websites, lead magnets, books, whatever. This yep. is your time. I'm going on mute. Yep. Cool. I appreciate you. So uh, Josh Miles, um, you can find me on uh, all social media platforms as The Real Josh Miles. Um, the Real Josh Miles. So if you're on IG, The Real Josh Miles. Facebook, The Real Josh Miles. TikTok, The Real Josh Miles. If you're talking about um, X or Twitter, um, it's just Real Josh Miles. Um and so you can find me on all those platforms. Uh, if you want to schedule a call with me, that's probably the best way to get started uh, is to go to onestadion.com. That's O-N-E-S-T as in Tom, A-D as in dog, I-O-N as in Nancy, One Stadium. Uh, that's my company. And so um, you can go to onestadion.com and book a discovery call with me. And I'd love to, uh, I'd love to put you onto the resources and figure out what it looks like for us to work together. Um, me help you put your solid marketing strategy in place and your scalable marketing systems in place. And so, I'm, um, yeah, I love working with entrepreneurs. It's my passion. And I get to I get to work with some phenomenal entrepreneurs across various industries. And so that's my goal to serve, help. And so uh, if you're interested in something like that, then let's make it happen because I think I'm your guy. And they don't have to just be sneakerheads and sneaker companies. You don't have to be sneakerheads. <laughs> you don't have to be sneakerheads. Even though I love to find somebody that's in that sneaker space again and help them do what I never did um, and take that to the next level. That's something I'm probably at this point unwilling to go back into just from a capacity standpoint. But if somebody's in the sneaker industry, like, hey, I got the sneaker business and I want to take it to the next level, like, I got you. Okay. All right. So, y'all, there are so many dimes and gems and nuggets like let's try to recap them. all right a there's nothing wrong with having failed before it's what That's can cool. you take from those different experiences and how can you repurpose it and come back better he talked about building systems how important that is so that way while you're you're resting because it's important to rest so you can be your best self you're still able to make money and do things he talked about in running events the thought process behind knowing all your numbers and the data so that when you get up there, you can present and put your best foot forward, whether that's a higher or lower ticket price, whether that's knowing what your, your best package is, you may have three, four or five, which one is the best one that's going to give the most value, making sure that before the people even come to the event, they are very clear on what they're going to get, what they're going to gain, getting more of the right people into the room. Um, he even talked about some of the things that he's noticed that in general business owners are struggling with. They can't really, really, really name their ICA and their sub niches. They don't have systems. So there's that whole concept. So being aware of the customer journey, how to set yourself apart when you're stacked up or next to people who do something similar. What can we do and what can we offer that may be different from these other 10,000 marketing agencies. How can we set ourselves apart and really doubling down into that so you can do it with confidence 
and with your own swag on it. So as y'all can tell, I told y'all season two, we coming with it. Y'all connect with them, follow them on social media, tag them, tell them you love this episode and why. We didn't even get into so much stuff. We didn't even get into being black men in this space, the lack of diversity in this space, getting into the bigger rooms and trying to figure out how to, like, there's so much more we could have got into. We may have to do a part two. But with all that being said, y'all follow them. If you know somebody who needs this episode, or maybe it's a young kid that you're like, hey, this is somebody you can look up to that looks like you, that that did it differently, like all of these different things. Make sure y'all share this, comment, um, give us some feedback on what you enjoyed from the episode. If you're going to hate, just keep that to yourself. Um, otherwise, we're excited, y'all. Connect with them. Until the next episode, you guys take care of yourself, stay safe, and until the next episode, peace.